Did you know you can use Adobe Photoshop to stabilize a hyperlapse? Let me show you how to do it. When it comes to stabilizing hyperlapse, you've probably heard of Adobe's Warp Stabilizer. This is the go-to tool which most professionals use to stabilize a hyperlapse. But Photoshop doesn't have Warp Stabilizer built in, so let me show you how to do it without. The first thing we will do is we will load our image sequence as layers into Photoshop. You can do it by going to File and then Scripts and then Load Files into Stacks. So I've already color graded and exported some JPEG photos which I will import now. Go to my folder where I saved them. Select them all, now click OK, and now Photoshop will just take a couple of seconds to import all of those files. So Photoshop created layers for each photo, so I will go down here and make only the first one visible by option clicking it. So what I will do now is I will manually adjust the position of each frame to match my reference point. What is the reference point? When shooting a hyperlapse, you usually choose a reference point which you aim for while shooting. In this case, I aim for the space between this angel on top of the victory column and where the column ends. So now I will use the rulers to make a cross section here so I know where my reference point is. If you don't see the rulers, you can find them over here at view and rulers and you will just need to draw across wherever your reference point was in your shot and this is your reference frame. Now I will go to the second layer, select it, and use the arrow keys to adjust the position of the frame so it matches my reference point. Try to be as precise as possible to make your hyperlapse look as smooth as possible. So looks good, then repeat the same process for the third image. As before, use the arrow keys, adjust the position, and now you have just to repeat all of this for every layer of your hyperlapse. I've got 100 layers to do here, so I will just fast forward this and see you when I'm done. So last three frames to position, almost done here. Just remember to be as precise as possible when doing this, so you can shift the images by pixels, so you can actually work really precise. Okay, so now I've finished repositioning all of my 100 layers here. So you might have noticed that I don't have any rotation chain tree in the images. That's because I was shooting this hyperlapse on a gimbal. If I would have shot this one handheld, I would have rotation change between the individual layers too, which would need to be corrected. This would be done by clicking Command T on your keyboard and then adjusting the rotation for each frame too. So if you want to stabilize a handheld hyperlapse, that would be an extra step, but for this case it was only readjusting the position of my hyperlapse. So now we need to create a video file from our individual layers and the fastest way I found, please leave a comment if there is a different way, is to actually export the layers and then re-import them as image sequence. So you can go to export, layers to files, locate the folder where you want to save them. I'm going to create a new folder here, delete the name prefix and change to JPEG. Make sure visible layers only is uh, not selected in case you have any invisible layers, so let's make sure every layer gets exported. Then click run and wait for Photoshop to export all of those layers. So while Photoshop is exporting, let me give you some more information. As you've seen, this process is quite a lot of work. And there is a reason why there is software like After Effects or Premiere Pro with motion trackers and warp stabilizer, which makes this process a lot faster. That's mainly because Photoshop is a software for editing photos and not editing video or stabilizing a hyperlapse. But I know a lot of people don't have access to video editing software or don't know how to use it. And that's why I want to show it in the software you might be familiar with. Also, when you're using this method, you really understand how important it is to be as precise and consistent as possible when shooting a hyperlapse. Because in the end, the motion tracker does the same thing you do here. And the more precise and consistent you are, the easier it is for a tracker or warp stabilizer to stabilize your hyperlapse. So let's re-import our image sequence, go to File, Open, locate the folder where you saved your hyperlapse to, select the first image, make sure image sequence is selected down here, and click Open. Choose a frame rate, I'm going with 25 here, click OK. And as you see, Photoshop already created a video layer for us. Now we need to make the timeline visible to see a preview of our video file. You can use it to scrub through here. It's a little bit choppy because it's already rendering previews, 
but if you've got some frames ready, you can scrub through and see how stable your hyperlapse is. So you see, it's looking pretty good here. Before exporting, I will also resize the layer for whatever I need to export. So go to image, canvas size, I'm going with full HD here, so 1920 by 1080. Click OK, make sure video group one is selected, hit command T, can bring it back in the middle here. And by holding down Alt, you can resize your hyperlapse to fit your frame, leaving some space here because there are still some uh, white spaces around from repositioning. Hit enter, do a quick preview again from the first frames to see everything looks good. Let's check the last frame. You can see all is looking stable. Now we can go down here, render video, add a new menu will pop up. We can give it a name. Just gonna type in hyperlapse. Save it to my desktop. If you want, you can create a subfolder. Make sure here the correct size is selected. I'm going back here for 1920 by 1080. Document frame rate is selected, so you have the same one as in the document, 25. And the same you can leave as is and then hit render. And here you can see the final hyperlapse, which you can use for social media or whatever you want to use it for. Here's some other things you can do in Photoshop. You can also add in some transformation and style keyframes. So if you want to zoom in more, zoom out more, you can do that by adding keyframes here. This might be useful for time lapses. And you can also add an audio track here. And you can also um, play around with the motion here, pan, zoom, rotate, whatever you want, just be creative. And yeah, that's an easy way to create a hyperlapse in Photoshop without knowledge about video editing software or any other tools like warp stabilizer or motion tracker. As mentioned before, this is quite a lot of work, but I still wanted to show you this method. If you don't have any video editing software or knowledge about how to use it, you can still go to Photoshop, stabilize a hyperlapse and even create a video to improve your social media content or to include it in a video project and also get a feeling how important it is to shoot a hyperlapse as precise as possible. If you want to know how to use Premiere Pro, Warp Stabilizer or DaVinci to stabilize a hyperlapse, make sure to click on any of the videos which will be on the screen right now. And if you have any ideas for future tutorials I should make, make sure to leave a comment, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss them and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye bye.